Honorable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, it's a great privilege to participate in this take note debate, and I've appreciated the move towards more conviviality in this place. Uh, that's what I experienced in the last take note debate, and I had a high regard for all the members and on every part of, of this place. We're all in this together. We're all Slava Ukraine. Um, new Democrats, as I know the other parties in this place, stand with the people of Ukraine. I and my colleagues express our deepest condolences to the people of Ukraine for those who lost their lives and those who remain seriously injured. And I know that all in this House tonight share uh, those condolences. We're relieved, of course, that the violence has come to an end. We are hopeful that violence will not uh, start up again. Um, I and my colleagues have been trying to follow closely, and there have been misses coming hourly from all parts of the globe, and particularly from Ukraine, from Ukrainians from across the globe, uh, updating us on what's going on. And as I understand, as we speak, the new Ukrainian government has been formed, and I'll speak about that in a few more minutes, about the incredible conditions that they are trying to place on who they are appointing into their cabinet. Um, we continue to take guidance from uh, the people of Ukraine, those who we can communicate with in these difficult times, and of course with the Canadian-Ukrainian community. Um, there was, as other colleagues have mentioned in their hometown, in Edmonton, there were more than 200 people who showed up in very frigid temperatures to, for a memorial for those who lost their lives in Ukraine. And following that, as my colleague from Edmonton East has mentioned, there was a gathering at uh, a residence for uh, Ukrainian students to the University of Alberta to uh, appreciate and look at the posters that were produced during the time in December to try to encourage people to come to the, to the square and to support the rising of the populace uh, towards a more just society. Very powerful, and if you get the opportunity to have this show come to your town, I encourage you. It, it, it is brilliant. Um, as many have mentioned, there's more than uh, almost one and a half million people of Ukrainian descent in this country. A good portion of those uh, are in my province of Alberta and in the city, which uh, I know the uh, Honorable Member for Edmonton East has shared in my own constituency, uh, many of Ukrainian descent. And uh, I've mentioned before that I have the privilege uh, on Christmas Eve to share in a beautiful Ukrainian feast. and. Uh, the more I spend with my Ukrainian Canadian friends, the more I'm thinking maybe a little bit of me might become uh, of Ukrainian. Live in Alberta long enough, you're bound to pick it up in a certain way. Um, um, free speech and the right of peaceful protest are fundamental to any democracy, and certainly that's what Ukrainians are calling for. Certainly it's important that all of us, as free Canadians, should share some of our time and our resources to support them to achieve that, which they de desire so strongly. And we are, of course, pleased that the government has sent a delegation over. We are disappointed that they didn't include representatives of the opposition. Um, I am hopeful that for the next delegations that go, we will have representatives of all parties. Why is that? Because Ukraine itself is now forming a government of many parties together. Um, I think maybe even some of the people from the Party of Regions have stepped up to the plate and, and trying to join in a more democratic form of government. So I think it's important that we show uh, good faith and show that cooperation is possible. Uh, the Ukrainian commu uh, Canadian community, including the Ukrainian Congress of Canada, has called on Canada to show leadership in the international community, and I know that all of us are turning to the UCC for leadership, and of course we all have components of that in our own communities. They're calling for us to support the Ukrainian people to achieve a lasting political solution that includes justice for human rights victims and respect for democratic freedoms. And it's my understanding that those measures are on the forefront of the considerations and the conditions for the appointment to their new government. There has been a lot of support by Canada to date to uh, uh, the economic and democratic development of the Ukraine. Um, certainly, Ukraine, I think back in 2009, was made as, uh, des designated as one of the priorities for Canadian aid through CETA, uh, considerable money, money dedicated, uh, a lot of it for economic development, particularly in, I think, uh, small and medium industries, but also, to a certain extent, civil engagement. And uh, 
a number of the members in the House today participated in a mission a year and a half ago that we took to Ukraine to look into concerns about the erosion of the rule of law and the erosion of democracy. And we actually met with chambers of commerce. We met with human rights activists. We met with opposition members, government members. And uh, we certainly heard a lot of ideas on uh, measures they would like to take and how we could support them. And I think it's very incumbent upon us to be um, working with other nations around the world to figure out a way where the government of Ukraine can actually put measures in place so that they can start combating the, the corruption which is endemic in their society. I've worked in other countries around the world where there is the same problem. And it comes from the simple thing of simply not paying your civil servants enough. And so then they, they get on the take so that they can survive and look after their families. And I know that's going to be one of the biggest challenges uh, that their government will, will face. And they will require some international expertise that has been offered to other nations around the world. And I think that's one of the areas where Canada could really uh, contribute. Um, our, our delegation that went with Foreign Affairs uh, made a number of recommendations to the Government of Canada out of that. Uh, we all agreed in unanimity. There were a couple of additional ones that our party made. But we did uh, advocate immediately and forcefully for the prompt release of political leaders. And of course, we're all uh, grateful that Timoshenko has been released. There were others who have been imprisoned. There's others who have had to leave the country, and hopefully they will be able to come back and participate uh, fairly in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, we called for the strengthening of the rule of law, and of course that has been what has fallen apart. Uh, uh, what I'm hearing a lot of people calling from, and including members of parliament in Ukraine, that it will be absolutely critical that the new government uh, move towards justice for all and, and democracy, not revenge. And of course, coming out of the heat of the moment, and the, and the reprehensible killing of people in the streets, there will be a lot of calls for revenge against the police, against judges who allowed these activities. And it's incumbent that we send experts to work with their, their judiciary, with their departments of justice, with their police. And we have done that before in other nations, and I think that we can do that again. Um, <clears throat> we particularly, in addition, the New Democrats out of that mission called for a careful look at protecting Canadian investments in Ukraine and making sure that they might be protected from corruption. Um, it's been a, 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 I spoke to a representative of the Canadian-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce just today before I came to the debate, and he said that there are a number of people in Canada who are actually looking into some kind of investment fund that Canadians can invest in to support Ukraine. But they want to be very careful that there will be stronger measures to protect against corruption because we want to protect Canadian investments. Um, Certainly, uh, Ukraine is cash-strapped. We've heard uh, the pleas for support. Um, they may well have lost the Russian support, and they're going to need major infusion of cash just to keep their government going, let alone their economy. So my suggestion would be, Mr. Chair, that one thing that Canada can do, and has shown leadership in the past, and I've been part of that in, in Indonesia, where Canada gave considerable aid in the 1980s and into the 1990s, is we can, we can show the leadership and bring together the donors from around the world and to sit down and try to coordinate where best can we give the expertise, the assistance, and, and, the, and the dollars, and where can they be targeted to move forward uh, Ukraine in the best way. Um, as the Ukrainians are expressing very clearly, uh, what went on in the Maidan is not about the EU versus Russia. It's about the call for a just society. And so we've heard a number of colleagues tonight saying, let's not talk about uh, Russia versus um, EU investment. Let's not talk about it as a divide between those who speak Russian and those who speak Ukrainian. Um, I think it's incumbent upon us to help the Ukrainians to bring all of those divides together again and, and the hope for a united country. Um, <clears throat> I was going to share some of the terms that they have imposed on the cabinet, but I'm running out of time. Maybe in a question I can, can do that. Um, I think that it's absolutely incumbent, and I think that our government has shown that they are recognizing Ukraine's parliament. It may be a little early. They have just established that parliament. Perhaps that will occur when the government delegation is there, perhaps when they return. 
I think that rather than just a political delegation, I think it's incumbent upon Canada to be also gearing up towards sending a delegation of experts, financial experts, anti-corruption experts, democratic reform experts, experts in setting up uh, judicial processes. And I think this will be a long-term engagement. Um, in uh, closing, I would simply say, Slava Ukraine. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Edmonton East. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I would agree with my colleague across that uh, for those that think that it's a di divided nation wanting to turn its back on Russia is just not so. Um, from a trade perspective, when I was in the uh, Euromedan, I spoke on stage there. Part of my speech that I said to the group was there that we stand with you for freedom in economic and civil trade engagement, not just with the East not just with the West, but with the world as truly a nation of the world. And I wanted to because the newspapers and things have been writing that somehow this was a decision of whether to trade with Russia or trade with the rest of the world. It was not. What Ukraine plainly wants to do, they, one third of their trade now is with Russia, the other third of their trade is with Europe, and the other third is with the world. They want to maintain doing that. The arrangement with Russia would have stopped the other two-thirds from happening by having an emphasis on open borders with Russia and more exclusivity with trading with Russia. They don't want to turn their back on Russia. They have a long history with Russia, but they wanted to have it, the opportunity to be able to trade with the world as they wish. Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and I thank uh, the Honourable Member from Edmonton East for his comments. And I will share, a young Ukrainian returning to Kiev has been quoted saying, this is not about getting into the EU, it's about justice. And justice is something that Ukraine hasn't seen in a long, long time. And as I mentioned, uh, to their credit, the new government that is forming, or in the process of forming their government, have set a number of conditions, one of which is no previous member of the presidential administration. They must have a uh, long time experience working in a specific sector, managerial experience, and a complete lack of involvement in human rights abuses and corrupt deals. So, you know, congratulations to the people of Ukraine trying to put together a proper government. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Toronto Centre. Uh, well, I'd like to start by assuring the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona that we in the Ukrainian community have a uh, saying which is everyone is Ukrainian they just may not know it yet. So there is a chance for the Honourable Member of Edmonton, from Edmonton Strathcona. Uh, I was very interested by the Honourable Member's comments about creating democratic institutions and creating institutions with civil servants who are able to enforce the rule of the law rather than break it. And I wonder whether the Honourable Member could comment on what specifically Canada can do to help Ukraine in building up its civic institutions, clearly one of the things missing in Ukraine, one of the reasons that it has come to this real crisis situation. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chen. I'd like to th thank the Honourable Member for her question. I know she's had a considerable experience working overseas, as have I. And uh, we have the experience in providing this expertise, as have many other nations around the world. And uh, for example, we've sent judges overseas to train judges in how to properly judge and set up the systems. Uh, I myself have trained judges, prosecutors, investigators in several countries around the world. And an important part of that program is not just for us to go over and say, well, this is the way we do it, but to bring them as well to Canada. And one of the things that uh, was identified strongly in the mission that we had a year and a half ago to Ukraine was desperately at the local level in the civic administration where they have very little experience in actually running government, including actually engaging citizens, and very little uh, recognition and understanding of NGOs and how do you bring people into council chamber. I think very, very important to bring civic officials over, um, to bring everybody from the judiciary, but I think it's also important for us to export people over who teach how to set up audit systems and how to deal with uh, anti-corruption. Uh, questions and comments? Question and comment. Uh, the Honourable Member for Trinity Spadina. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, 
While we mourn uh, the 100 heroes who lost their lives fighting for independence, for freedom and democracy, their spirit will continue to guide us here uh, and, and in future and inspire us to assist the people of Ukraine to seek real economic independence and true freedom and human rights. While Canada has taken a first step in sending a delegation to Ukraine, it must also assist in the country's economic development. It must also assist in its democratic reform and help its people root out corruption. Can my colleague elaborate in some details on how Canada can contribute to Ukraine's economic and democratic development? Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Well, I'm sure Mr. Chair, I only have a few minutes to speak to this, and I don't think that I would ever pretend that I personally have all the answers for Ukraine. Heaven knows we're still working on good governance in Canada, hopefully all working together in this direction. Um, a couple of examples that I could provide, and I think it would be well worth the government looking into this, those who are responsible for foreign affairs and CETA and so forth, is um, I know while I was working in Bangladesh on a CETA project, there was also a whole program uh, that came out of the Government of Canada that was actually working within the Bangladesh government on instituting anti-corruption measures. And uh, Bangladesh has been well known for quite some time of being very high on that list of, of corrupt regimes. And they were making some headway. So we actually have a lot of expertise within our own administration. And I think it'll be, uh, we should just sit down and do the hard work and, and to start talking to our own administration about what experience have we had in other countries. Let's start identifying the most cost-effective way to do that. But again, I think it's really, really incumbent. As I understand, the Americans are also headed over right now to Ukraine, so are the Europeans. Really important. Canada could show that leadership. It was done in Indonesia when we had far too many donors competing with each other is Canada showed the leadership through CETA and actually called a meeting and continued to hold those meetings to coordinate the donors so that every dollar is used in a very efficient, expeditious way without the overlap. So I think Canada has an opportunity to show leadership here. I think that that's one way that we really could contribute to the development of rule of law and democracy in Ukraine. Uh, yes, we have time uh, for one more question and response. The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and my friend from Edmonton Strathcona, in, the, in light of your comments about what Canada could do to show leadership, given that the United States is now stepping up and saying, as we hope the Ukraine can find its way to an acceptable democratic government, does uh, my friend and does the official opposition believe we should join the U.S.? And, and we know that uh, Secretary of State John Kerry has offered a $1 billion guarantee to help the uh, Ukrainian economy become stable during this time of political crisis. Uh, what view would you take of Canadian financial contributions? The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Yeah, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for her contribution to the debate and asking me the questions. Um, I can't speak to the actual amount. I know that uh, in this House today, concerns were raised about Venezuela. Um, I'm having people contact me and say, you're talking about Ukraine, but what about Thailand? And so I think that it's, it's important that the government be serious about that and think about what we can commit. I think that it is a valid question because I think that we need to put our money where our mouth is. Um, time is of the essence probably in Ukraine. Um, if they try to hold that government together, they're going to need an, a major infusion of dollars just to get to the next tranche before they can no negotiate with IMF or someone else. Uh, maybe we can also provide guidance uh, to them and to the IMF and say don't go too hard on them because most uh, Ukrainians are living in dire poverty already. I think that uh, certainly it's incumbent upon us to commit uh, a lot more money. I guess we'll wait to hear when the government returns. It would have been nice again if representatives of the other parties could be there and we could all come back convivially and say, yeah, we heard them personally. Let's go for it. So maybe a return delegation very soon, that, that can happen out of that, maybe during uh, the election monitoring. Uh, and we have time for one uh, short question and response, in fact. The Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I know it will be a very short question, but uh, uh, the opinion that it's not uh, European Union, uh, again, if, uh, one on one side and Russia on the other, well, I, I see it actually that way because on one side you see European Union that is democratic, 
that's inclusive, that uh, it's a group of countries that decided to work together. And on, other side, on the other side, you see Russia, that it's not democratic, that wants to rule over others. And uh, the, the future would really look uh, bleak. And the government that was formed today, the uh, government of national unity, it has to be um, uh, approved by the uh, parliament tomorrow, well, it has a very hard task in front of them. And one of them, I guess, and, and uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, the honorable member for her comment, is to bring people together that there is no talk about division in Ukraine because I think one of the tasks that they truly have is to make sure that all people in Ukraine feel, inclu if, uh, feel inclusion, feel included, not excluded from the whole system. Yeah. Uh, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Yes, I think the Honourable Member is making a very good point. But I think the important thing will be not what Canada or other external countries can do, but what we can do to support Ukraine to become strong so that they, on their own, can combat against anybody who might try to divide the country. Um, obviously, there'll be a lot of turmoil right now. Um, if you've been viewing the coverage, um, they've got uh, a volunteer uh, police out there with the police officers. Who knows how long the police will have patience for that. Uh, there will be a lot of fa families with deep grief who will be seeking revenge and so forth. We don't know what's going on in the Crimea. Um, I think the best that we can do is just say we are there for, for Ukraine. We're there for, to keep your country, country together. What can we do to assist? Um, let's hope that we don't go to the extent where we're having to think about sending in armaments as has happened in the past in some cases uh, with invasions. So I think time is of the essence. There have been too many times in history where people have said, oh, we should have gone in sooner. So let's not make that mistake this time.